So let's say you're sitting at home all day in quarantine, you're unemployed, you, maybe you just graduated with a CS degree, you got no friends, you got no girlfriend, you got nothing to do. You're looking for a job, a software engineering job, but you got to solve, you got to get through the interview to do that. So you hear about a site called leakcode.com. You look at the problems. Well, there's over 1500 problems. So where do you even start? Well, the first problem, right? Most people start with the first one called twosum. In my opinion, this isn't the best problem to start with, but it's not the worst either. It's not that difficult of a problem. It's not too difficult to understand. Maybe you're able to solve it on the first try. Then you go to the next problem. Okay, two no add two numbers together. Seems easy enough. It's a medium. How hard can a medium even be? Now, if you're a beginner, you're probably going to struggle with this problem. It's not super easy. It's a linked list question. If you haven't done a lot of linked list questions before, you're definitely going to struggle. You're, maybe you'll look at the solution. Maybe you don't even know how to understand this solution, right? It seems pretty complicated. There's a bunch of algorithms going on, pointers. You don't even know, you know, what is this stuff? And then you get really discouraged. You feel stupid. You think, well, these problems are too difficult. I don't even, I'm not even able to solve the easy ones. Why even bother? I'm going to quit. I'm just going to do something else. I'm you know, going to stay unemployed or whatever. Now, that, so that's the first problem, right, that a lot of people have. What order do you solve the problems in? There's so many problems, you're not going to do all of them, so which problems should you solve? My solution to that is this list that I found. It's not created by me. Some It's created by someone named Sean, and it's a list of 171 questions. What I like about this list is that it starts out easy. So the first problem contains duplicate. It's actually easy easier than two sum. So if you're a beginner, this list is very intuitive. You'll start with easy problems and then work your way up to more difficult problems. Um, and two sum is in this list. You'll find two sum is a lot lower down here, right? There's a bunch of easier questions that you solve before two sum. Also, the good thing about these problems is they're grouped uh, like the, the categories are grouped, the patterns. So you'll solve a bunch of you'll see a bunch of dynamic programming problems here, right? So you'll solve them together, and then you'll solve a bunch of linked list questions, right? These four problems are linked list questions. Solving similar questions grouped together is very helpful in my opinion. You know, if you do one linked list question, maybe then you do a tree question, you're not really gonna be noticing the patterns. You're not gonna be noticing what makes tree questions similar to each other. But if you solve them grouped together, it's very helpful in my opinion. Another thing that I, I think a lot of people do is you'll solve two sum, right? Hey, that was not too bad. The next intuitive problem seems three sum, right? How much more difficult could that be? It's just three sum. It's just one more number, right? You know, some people might disagree with me, but I think this is actually a pretty difficult problems. There, there's some really clever tricks that are used in this problem that are really unintuitive for beginners. And so you'll get to this problem and think, man, it's really difficult. You'll try to understand it. You'll go to the discuss question, discuss section. Maybe somebody has a really complicated solution. And so that's why I think solving problems in a certain order is really helpful because you know, two sum might not be too bad, but three sum is pretty difficult. But if you, there's a certain problem, two sum two, this problem, if you solve two sum two, where the input array is sorted, before you solve three sum, you'll notice that three sum is actually not that difficult. If you solve easier problems that are similar to harder problems, you'll notice patterns that are used and then you can reuse those patterns in more difficult problems. Don't start with difficult problems. Some people make that mistake. So again, that's why I think this list is really good. You don't have to go through the entire list. There's 170 questions. Maybe you only want to go through the easy questions and maybe you only want to go through the medium questions. Maybe the company that you want to interview for doesn't even ask hard questions, so you don't bother with hard questions. That's completely fine. But I really think this list is going to help a lot 
for most people, right? You don't have to go through every single problem in this list. You can skip some questions if you feel like they're too easy. But having some level of structure, right? Not just solving problems in a completely random order. Having a little bit of structure, I think, helps a lot in being able to uh, learn the, the patterns that are required in leak code. Okay, so you solve your first problem, right? Which is, which problems do you even solve? But now you actually have to solve the problem. How are you going to do that? What if you don't know how to solve a problem? Well, there's a lot of strategies you can do. And the biggest strategy, in my opinion, the most helpful one is being able to visualize a problem. And how are you going to visualize a problem? Well, you can draw a picture. So if you had a linked list question, right? Draw the picture out and try to like work with the picture. So for example, if you are doing some pointer manipulation, you know, you can you can draw a picture and kind of understand what's going on. Maybe you're reassigning a pointer and you can draw it to understand what's actually going on. A lot of people skip this for some reason, right? They try to do it in their head and visualize it, but that's very difficult. Drawing a picture will help so much in visualizing what's actually going on, especially if you're working with linked lists, right? There's some really complicated linked list questions where you're doing a lot of like pointer reassignment, right? You're doing a bunch of stuff and it can get really abstract and really complicated. But with a picture, a lot of it gets cleared up. And this will work with so many things, right? Like if you had a binary tree, uh, a graph, an array, dynamic programming, it helps with almost every type of problem. And of course, there's a lot of other strategies that I'll probably talk about in other videos that can help as well. Okay, so now you know which problems to solve and you have some strategies of how to solve them. But there's still going to be some problems that you don't know how to solve. Maybe you solve contains duplicate on your first try. That's great. But maybe you get to a different problem, reversing a linked list, for example. Maybe you're not able to solve it on your first try. Maybe you had to look at the solution. That's completely fine, but you want to take a note of this problem. You weren't able to solve it on your own. You had to look at the solution. So you want to revisit this problem in the future, maybe in a week, maybe in a month, but you want to revisit the problem and you want to be able to solve the problem from scratch. What that means is when you revisit the problem, don't look at the solution. Try to solve it on your own. If you're able to solve the problem on your own, that's great. That means you don't have to revisit the problem anymore. But for any problems that you can't solve from scratch, you, you really want to revisit the problem because you really want to prove that you're able to internalize the solution and actually understand it and you're not just regurgitating someone else's solution. And so I call this third uh, step of solving problems testing your knowledge, right? So you revisit problems that you weren't able to solve. And I also just want to let you know, especially if you're a beginner, you're going to start solving problems. You'll start maybe with 50 or 100, and you're going to see, man, it's really taking you a long amount of time to do these problems. So maybe the first 100 problems you solve, it takes you 100 hours to solve those problems because you're learning a bunch of algorithms, you're learning a bunch of patterns and all that stuff. But the next 100 problems, maybe it'll only take you half the time that it did before because you're getting faster as you learn these problems. So when you revisit old problems, you'll notice that the, it'll be a lot quicker than it was before. And you know, when I, when I think about that, like you're getting faster, you might not recognize it, but you really are. When I, when I think about that, I think about Goku going on Snake Way, right? The first time he went on Snake Way, it took him like six months of just running across it to get through. But then next time, he was able to just jet across, right? Like, look at him. Just, he knows Kaioken. He, he's got his, his, his skills. He, he just goes through the entire snake way in like one or two days, right? That's kind of what leak code is. The first hundred problems are going to be really difficult for you probably. But the next, you know, 
a certain amount of problems are going to be a lot easier. You're going to be Goku. You're going to have the strength, the skills, the speed. You'll just be able to jet through these problems and you will get better. It's not always easy, but if you can, if you're able to get through the problems with a certain level of structure, it doesn't have to be this list, but going through it with a certain amount of structure and having certain problem solving skills like using pictures, as well as making sure to revisit problems that you weren't able to solve. If you can really put these strategies into place, you're going to be Goku jetting across these problems and, you know, just winning. And, you know, hopefully you'll get your job. You'll get your high salary you're looking for. You'll get a girlfriend. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get out of quarantine. You know, you'll get everything you want. And I think that's all I wanted to share. You know, I could talk about leak code and problem solving strategies for hours and I'll probably save some strategies for later videos, but I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. If this was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll probably see you at some point in the future.